Hello again, new video today and this time we're going to discuss the SSL VPN on a FortiGate. And the reason for this isn't hard to find because FortiNet discovered a new vulnerability last month on its SSL VPN interface. Now, we have to admit that this is not the first one nor can we ensure that this will be the last, but unfortunately that's a limitation of every product which is developed by humans. Every vendor suffers from vulnerabilities from time to time, that's just the way it is. Now, because we get a lot of questions from our users about these vulnerabilities, I want to use them as a guideline throughout this episode. So there we go. First question, is SSL VPN still safe to use and what are the alternatives? So I can tell you, yes, SSL VPN is still safe to use, provided that you have followed the guidelines in the PCERT advisories. Often these includes upgrading your devices or changing a setting. What concerns the alternatives, the method of choice is Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA. It's a connection method which requires way more security checks than traditional VPN, enforces zero trust, and removes the burden of always needing to set up a VPN connection. We also have FortiSassy, which basically moves your security stack to the cloud. The transition from traditional SSL VPN is more complex though, and requires a change in your network topology. Another option which does not require an additional license is setting up a dial-up IPsec VPN. Benefits of this solution are that it is way less likely to encounter any vulnerabilities and you actually don't need to use the 40 client. The downside is that it uses ports 500 and 4500, which are not always allowed on public networks. It requires more configuration and by default it does not support SAML authentication or MFA by entering a code, although these functionalities have recently been added to the 40 client as well. As you have seen, you can use the built-in wizards to ease the configuration. Question 2. Should I disable web portal mode? Well again, if you have patched your 40 OS, you should be safe. But if we have a look at all the vulnerabilities published so far, there is indeed this tendency that portal mode, which is using a web browser, is more prone to vulnerabilities than tunnel mode. So if you don't need this, it's better to turn it off. Doing so requires you to remove all SSL VPN portals, which have web mode enabled from the SSL VPN settings. You also see that there is this fall through policy. What I often do is create a no access profile, which has both tunnel and portal mode turned off, which I then apply to this group. Third question, what measures can I take to protect my user accounts? Well, we often say people are the weakest link in cybersecurity and that's still the case until today. So always have 2FA implemented as a minimum. This can be done by using 40 token, 40 token cloud, email 2FA or by requiring a client certificate. You can check my previous video to discover how to do this within the Fortinet ecosystem. You can also integrate with the authentication mechanisms of Google, Microsoft or any other IDP by integrating through SAML. I will link the Fortinet documentation in the description below. Another measure you can take is disabling concurrent VPN access in the portal settings. This ensures that once a user is logged in, you cannot log in a second time on the VPN with the same credentials. Question number four. How can I limit access to my SSL VPN interface? Well, you could use local in policies for this, but these do not give you the same possibilities and visibility as a normal firewall policy. Therefore, the go-to method is to publish your SSL VPN on a Lubeck interface. The migration to go from a regular SSL VPN configuration to an SSL VPN on Lubeck is quite simple. First, you create a Lubeck interface and assign it a dummy IP. This can even be an APIPA IP address, because we're only going to use this address inside our FortiGate. Once you have done this, create a VIP which forwards requests on your WAN interface to this Lubeck interface. In theory, you could use any TCP port you want, and people often use this as a security mechanism, security by obscurity, to use a completely unexpected port for their VPN. Personally, I don't like this approach, because too often on public networks only DNS, HTTP and HTTPS are allowed. And that's just the beauty of SSL VPN, that it uses just HTTPS. So if you're implementing it with some sort of exotic port, then why not go for IPsec VPN in the first place? 
So in my opinion, use port 443 on the outside and port forward it using a VIP to the port used by your SSL VPN inside the FortiGate. Then it is just a matter of adding the Lubeck as one of the listening interfaces in the SSL VPN settings and adding a firewall policy which allows access from your WAN to this Lubeck VIP. You can test by removing the other interface, leaving only the Lubeck to listen on. Now you can start adding restrictions on the source of this Lubeck policy. What you can do, for example, is blocking Tor exit nodes, like in the article in the description. Keep in mind that if you use all as the destination address in the policy, you should enable set match VIP enable in CLI. There are also predefined ISDB objects for malicious servers. And another good practice is to only allow connections from certain countries. Therefore, you can create a custom geography based address object. Fifth question, what security profile should I enable on the policy to my Lubeck interface? Well, the answer is simple, none, you can't. A FortiGate does not inspect traffic towards its own IP addresses, only when traffic is traversing the FortiGate. But there is a way to circumvent this limitation, and that's by hosting the SSL VPN in its own VDOM. The idea is the same as with the Lubeck interface, but now instead of using a Lubeck, you will host the SSL VPN in a different VDOM on the inter-VDOM link between your regular root VDOM and the SSL VPN VDOM. This way, traffic is traversing the VDOM which contains the firewall policy regulating access to your VPN. Thus, this traffic will be handled as any type of traffic and will get inspected by all the security profiles applied. Now you can add a specialized IPS profile, which is specifically targeted at protecting SSL servers. Question number six, can ZTNA be integrated with SSL VPN? Well, yes, you can use ZTNA tags in your firewall policy from your SSL VPN towards the destination. If you want to regulate access towards your VPN by using ZTNA, you can if using web portal mode. It basically entails the same ID as with hosting your SSL VPN in its own VDOM, but now instead of using a VIP, you will use a ZTNA proxy server in order to forward traffic coming from your WAN interface. Have a look at the description for more information on how to implement ZTNA. For tunnel mode, things get more complicated, because the Forti client will be both responsible for setting up the SSL VPN and also doing the TCP forwarding for your ZTNA. So this will not work. But if you're only using TCP based connections, you can completely replace your VPN by using ZTNA. Also keep in mind that ZTNA is very granular, so you can perfectly implement ZTNA and SSL VPN concurrently on the same FortiGate. Last question, what other stuff can I do to further harden my SSL VPN? Well, first tip, disable access after 3 failed attempts and extend the timer for lockout to 15 minutes. To protect yourself from brute force attacks, you can lower the maximum number of attempts a user can try to enter its credentials and extend the timer the user will be locked out. Second tip, try enforcing TLS version 1.3. This can be done through CLI by using these commands. Tip number 3. Add a SSL certificate to your VPN. This can be done by requesting a Let's Encrypt certificate through the built-in mechanism on your FortiGate. The certificates will be automatically kept up to date and remove the annoying message for your users that the server certificate cannot be trusted, thus alarming your users when they do see this warning that something should be wrong. Or even better, use a wildcard certificate from one of the other trusted CAs. Last tip, you can use thread feeds to limit access to your SSL VPN. Include them as a source in your deny policy. Have a look at threadfeeds.io for some free thread feeds to use. Okay, I see that I went way over my five minutes again. But anyway, I hope these tips were valuable. So do not hesitate to let us know in the comments what you think of our videos. Topic suggestions, always more than welcome. And you can reach us at tech at exclusive networks.be. Hope to see you next time.